Okay, so moving on, um, I'm not uh, high profile enough to get someone to introduce me, so I'm going to introduce myself. Um, my name is Johnny Garside, and I'm uh, an employee at Everton in the community. And I'm just uh, here really to profile some of the mental health work that we do. Um, I'm quite happy to say the speakers that have gone before have actually nicked quite a bit of what uh, I'm going to share, so that will hopefully help us with some of the, uh, the time of today. So there might be points in which I'll either kind of uh, gloss over some stuff or, or maybe not spend as much time on it, obviously based on uh, the good work and the great uh, messages that I've already gone before from the likes of uh, Justine, who's been integral and evaluating some of the, the work that we do, and obviously uh, Andy Byrne and Champion and our work. Okay. Okay, so for those who uh, are not aware or maybe have not heard about Everton in the community, just a short overview. Uh, we are the official charity of Everton Football Club. Um, we are in our 26th year now uh, with a rich history and um, utilising the iconic brand of Everton Football Club to address a number of um, issues out in the community. Per year, we'll engage close or over 13,000 people and in our wide range and provision of diverse community programs covering a number of social themes and i um, proud to say that we're certainly one of the largest, most diverse as mentioned and successful football community schemes not only in the UK but in the world. So just a small whistle stop tour. Okay so I put this slide in to kind of spark a little bit of debate I thought there might be some cynics in the room as to Hence why I put a question mark at the end there as to what is the impact? Uh, is there a positive one? But I think we've uh, quite comprehensively covered that today, so that's a bit of a, uh, a given. But certainly there's some growing uh, scientific research around to demonstrate the positive impact that participation in physical activity and sport can have um, on mental well-being. And obviously here's just but a few, uh, I won't go into too much detail, but I just wanted to stress obviously the kind of differences from being involved in just physical activity uh, as opposed to being involved in, in a sport and team environment which would elicit um, some maybe additional benefits such as a sense of belonging, uh, increased uh, feelings of self-worth and as already highly uh, emphasised today feelings of social interaction which can be so integral in people's general well-being but certainly in their recoveries from potential <coughs> mental illness. Um, and believe it or not, for the cynics in the room, and again, but depending on what side of the fence you sit on, sport does build resilience. And you only need to look at you know, professional football or professional sport from one week to the next. The very nature of sport is that it's competitive and hence there's you know, a victor and a, and a loser. And within that, again, is opportunities to build resilience as dealing with victory and defeat. Um, and again, some, some goal endorsements of some quite high-profile academics in the, uh, in the field that certainly physical activity can be used as a, an intervention tool to complement uh, that kind of medical model which has already been spoken about to, uh, to increase that social awareness and general well-being. So again, I won't go into too much detail here, but in so much as what is the need, what is the current landscape, um, some of these are, are well known and I, I won't uh, labour the point, but certainly um, the last one here that you know, people experiencing or access to mental health services or an increased risk of a range of uh, physical illnesses, that that uh, relationship between mind, body, physical activity or inactivity and, and mental well-being um, it kind of hangs in the balance really, so hence what I'm going to present today will hopefully compound this, uh, this debate of you know, promoting mental health uh, through the medium of physical activity and sport and hopefully positively impact some of those statistics there. Okay, so Everton in the community, uh, we've kind of been heavily involved within the world of community mental health for, for quite a number of years now and throughout this time we've designed a number of uh, mental health programs and innovative and pioneering approaches we'd like to think to address uh, a number of mental health related issues 
Um, just a kind of brief overview of uh, Cradle to the Grave schematic there, and so much as these are just a few of the community programs that we currently deliver, which are specifically designed to cater for members of the community in all local areas experiencing mental illness. Uh, I won't go into too much detail, but to give a brief overview, uh, Imagine Goals, which is the uh, second to the right there, sorry, down the top, top left, uh, is a programme I'm going to spend a bit more detail on today. But we have, uh, as an offshoot from that, a uh, programme called Employee Tactics. It was quite damning the statistics that Joe read out this morning that 97% of the service users are unemployed. Again, that's something that in our experiences working alongside Maisie here that we've identified, hence why we designed a mental health specific employability course to directly target that need. Inside right, in the middle, if we play on words there, um, is a, a mental health program specifically designed for ex-service personnel. So the, um, the area of Maisie side is quite a, a large recruitment area for the armed forces. Obviously, the current cuts and redundancies are quite a large proportion of people uh, who have served in Her Majesty's Armed Forces either residing or soon to be uh, residing back in our area, uh, and obviously could potentially disaffected by their experiences in combat or um, during active service. And as men, uh, Mandy kind of listened to before, the risk factors around trauma and so on. So that program specifically catering for that population. Healthy Blues is, you might be surprised to know that it's not a football program. Um, it's everything but a football program, hence multi-sports and for the elder population. I'm trying not to offend anyone here, but for the over 40s. Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought that was okay. Okay, so uh, again, just catering for that clientele, uh, people, members of the community that might not be inclined to engage in a football activity, for example. And again, as an offshoot from that, um, predominantly we, we are really good at engaging men. Uh, Simon spoke very uh, articulately this morning about mechanisms and approaches to engaging men. Um, we're probably the opposite, we probably struggle in some cases to engage women. So, one of our offshoot programs is a, is a program called uh, Girls On Side. And then finally, as uh, Andy mentioned uh, loosely in his talk, uh, a dementia program, uh, which is really groundbreaking ground, ground in its approach is called Pass On Memories. Okay, so for the purpose of this talk, I'm going to just focus on Imagine Your Goals, which is seen as our flagship mental health uh, football program. It's a partnership between ourselves and Maze Care and Trust. And uh, back in 2008, it was launched uh, as a program, the first of its kind. And, um, well, we've kind of capitalised on the inspirational brand of Everton Football Club and Everton in the community to kind of make inroads to people out in the community that maybe statutory mainstream services uh, have struggled to in the past. And we were the first club in the Premier League to employ a mental health football coordinator. Okay, so just as a, a brief overview, the programme has several ambitious objectives based on the following themes. And I'm just going to spend a bit of time just going through each one. And I think the, the objectives up on the screen there uh, have kind of been common throughout all of the talks today. So um, it, it's, it's, good, it's good to know that we uh, you know, are on the same team sheet. There's a lot of other people and organisations out in the community working towards the same agenda. So the first one being increasing participation. Here's just a, a number of uh, photographs that would illustrate the point. Uh, and these are all specifically catered for people experiencing uh, mental illness health in the community. And I think it's probably most pertinent that that middle box there or, or bubble is that when as part of our um, independence research evaluation, it was uh, ascertained that seventy seven percent of our participants uh, the engagement in our program um, was um, their main or only sport and activity just kind of further demonstrate the kind of the lifeline that this program is and what potentially that impact might be if a program such as this were to be in existence. And say so we've, we've kind of discussed long and hard the, the impact of uh, physical inactivity on mental well-being and we've really demonstrated that point quite nicely. In uh, 2010 actually, that's a 
Tony Hall Bill should be 2010 on the bottom one. We were really pleased and proud to see that our program that we designed locally here in Merseyside uh, through Everton was taken up nationally by the Premier League and rolled out to 15 other clubs around the country. And it's something that we're really, really proud of. To this day, you can go to the North, East, Birmingham, down south, wherever it may be, and see this Imagine Gold model serving and benefiting local communities. And to date, you know, 3,000 plus people uh, are benefiting. So that's something that we're really, really proud of. Okay, so I won't leave the point here, but just to um, give a little bit of an oversight, I think it was really interesting what Simon said earlier when he said uh, we talk long and hard about engaging with hard to reach groups and looking at it from the other side to say, well, maybe it's this, that your service or provision is, is hard to engage with. And I think that's a really interesting point. And, and certainly from our view, uh, we're, we're kind of bottom up, as previously mentioned person-centred, having that consultation to find out what people's interests are and working from there as the first point of call, rather than um, being prescript. Um, and for that, uh, those aims, we've uh, been um, fortunate enough to win a number of national awards. Okay, so this is all well and good, but if there's nothing uh, of real you know, substance to, uh, to be the underbelly and to substantiate these claims that I'm making, then you know, it's my word against yours, so we really do pride ourselves on being in a position to, to back up these claims. So as an independent journal uh, from the Mental Health of Practice, found out a number of very interesting uh, statistics and, and research findings that uh, we're in a position to share with you today. So through a process of uh, focus groups and qualitative research, 100% uh, of participants engaging with this program felt that they were fit to have more energy. 94% have an improved sense of well-being. I mean, how, how do you quantify that? That's, that's a statistic and it's great, but that, that represents one person potentially. It represents their life chances, their autonomy, their, you know, their, their trajectory in life. And it's, it's, it's amazing to think that you know, being engaged in programs such as this could elicit such, such life, life changing. Benefits. 59% had fewer mental health problems, 88% uh, had more self esteem. Uh, I won't go all through all the others because I'm sure you can see them there, but just to demonstrate that this isn't something that we, we, we're just kind of uh, resting on our laurels with and saying that we, we know it works, but we're actually trying to substantiate those claims and trying to get some sort of rigor attached to it so that we can pass on this best practice uh, and share learning across the board and across sector. 97% of major care service users are currently unemployed. Again, through our uh, volunteering pathways internally at Everton in the community, and through our specific designated mental health um, employability course, uh, employee new tactics, we're hopefully, uh, and we're hopefully in a position to really impact on those, those figures. I mean, as you'll see there, um, we've been able to get some, some marked success in these particular areas. So again, we're in a, in a positive place to say that with the, with the support in place, we can, we can certainly help people be more job ready and uh, increase their optimism and confidence to enter the, the job market. Again, as part of our national agenda to uh, champion this cause and be a, a, a leader, in this particular field, we were in a position to help with producing some national toolkits to that end of kind of passing on our, our, our challenges, how we overcome them, our solutions, the things that work, things that have saved as well into these toolkits which are now endorsed by Times of Change and um, the national governor body for football, the FA. <coughs> And again, depending on where you sit on the fence, you might see sports as well. Could it be a, a hamper to resilience? Dealing with loss, dealing with defeat, being unfit, having young 20 year olds running around you, whizzing around you, might not be the best thing. But competition has an element of giving people a sense of ownership, giving people a sense of autonomy, giving sense of, uh, people a sense of pride. Um, and. We're in a position that we've got a local mental health league that caters 
for a wide range of um, community mental health teams. Um, and again, it's been replicated back around the country. And the top logo there is from uh, an organisation called Mental Health Football UK, which has been pioneered and founded by one of our own uh, participants, uh, I use the word service user, um, participants on Imagine Your Goals, who's actually in, in the crowd today. And that has been the, it's, it's, birth, it's, it's brainchild, really, of bringing together all of these fantastic organisations, uh, whether it be community led, voluntary led whether it be just individuals, NHS trust as football clubs, community schemes, who have a, you know, a desire to get involved in this area way, but might not necessarily have the tools, the contacts, the resources to, uh, to implement it on the ground level. So that has been set up to, to cater for that need and has grown exponentially to the point where 500 people are currently registered on that database and receiving um, well, daily and weekly updates. And um, the culmination of that will be tomorrow. Uh, to celebrate World Mental Health Day, we are hosting a national mental health football championship here at Edge Hill with 24 teams from right around the country coming to celebrate that and, and say it's something that we're, we're very, very proud of. Okay, so raising awareness, destigmatizing, cha challenging stigma. Here's just a number of, of ways in which we do that. And I'm pleased to say that even right from the top, we've got the buy in. So, our glorious leader, Mr. Martinez, is, uh, is fully, fully behind the work that we do. Uh, and again, this year has is, is put his weight behind the World Mental Health Day cause and just serves to give us more of a, an impact, more of a thumbprint, more weight to breaking down the stigma and raising awareness. Okay, so I'm going to finish on, on this last point. And I think it's been stressed on a number of presentations during today that we can debate long and hard and we have and we spoke about theory and we spoke about practice and we spoke about political agendas and finances and all of this but at the end of the day it's about people in my opinion the reason I do what I do and I'm not usually accustomed to wearing a suit so I'm usually in a track suit out day in day out in the community working with people is because of the opportunity to change people's lives and this is one one way in which um, we can do it by coming alongside people and giving them that sense of um, autonomy, giving them that sense of autonomy. Again, this is uh, one of our guys um, who was sectioned under Mental Health Act in 2007. Thanks, thanks, a bit. Um, came agrophobic, a prisoner in his, own, in his own home and in his own mind. Um, the antipsychotic medication has made him permanently hungry, drowsy. Again, the physical components have gained quite substantial weight in a short space of time from negatively impact again that, that cycle uh, impact on the mental well-being. And I won't go through the rest, I'll, I'll leave you to, to have a little peruse through. But just profiling the case that this is one in hundreds of thousands of people locally here in this area and hopefully have sport and physical activity aligned with that social model can have a real sustainable impact on people's lives and he was due to be here today but he's actually got a job interview so uh, something that we're, we've been supporting him right through the, this, this process so i'm happy to take any questions at this point but uh, suffice to say i'm really really delighted to see so many people come to a conference such as this you're all in this room because you have an interest in mental health sport, physical activity, football, sport for both. Um, and it really shows the, the appetite that people really want to see this agenda push forwards. So, thank you. Please feel free to uh, fire any questions off. Yes, this, this might sound quite trivial here, but um, I understand that tribal football can be, um, and especially in the city like this, is there any um, resistance from the red half of the city or any of the people that engage in that area, mainly from that blue half of the city, so trying to some of the local sports team? It's, it's quite a common question, so uh, don't be too perturbed by it. But certainly, there's, there's no resistance, um, not, not from uh, any, any other organisations be it Liverpool or, or otherwise. Um, and 
it's quite a common question they say, well, is it only for Everton supporters, or uh, do you find that only Everton supporters access a programme like this? And I suppose, on the surface, it's, it, it would seem a logical um, question to ask, and it is. But in our experiences, and this is representational of not just our mental health work, but across all of our community programmes, if anything, the dominance in terms of fan base is, is Liverpool fans actually accessing our programmes. Uh, that previous slide, I won't mention his name, but the previous slide of that case study is uh, actually of a staunch Liverpool fan, uh, previously a season ticket holder, Liverpool tattoo. So, but his, his, his famous kind of phrase that he, he, he rolls out in uh, with quite a lot of pride is that on the field is a Liverpool fan, and if it was a derby, it's Liverpool or Everton all day long, but off the field, in terms of what the pro, what the club's done for him, what it represents in the community, he's an Everton fan. So um, no, there is no there is no kind of bias to one or the other. Really, it's about people, regardless of, of the club or their fan or their allegiance. Um, but that's the mechanism by which we initially engage this football and the, the, the brand. Um, I don't know actually, I, I, I guess probably in that community setting, yes, yeah, so most of the guys on our programme and girls would champion Everton in a community setting, whether that translates into a competitive Premier League scenario, I don't know, but that's actually not one of our objectives, maybe it should be. I'll have a word with the boss over there, I'll see if we can... <laughs> okay, thank you for your time, thanks.